Hello, this is Carrie Fell. Welcome to my studio. So I'm going to try the crock pot experiment again with the primary colors. I'm going to change up two things. I'm going to change the colors representing the CMYK and I'm going to use a bright blue, the same yellow, and a raspberry. Last time I used rhodamine red and turquoise for the cyan and magenta and I found that those colors really like to flow and mix. I would like the colors to strike a little faster so I think that these two, the raspberry and the bright blue, will strike a little faster than the other ones. Another thing I'm doing is I'm soaking the warp in acidic water. Another way to make the dyes strike faster. The reason why I want the dyes to strike faster is I want the three primary colors to show up as primary colors as well as the in-between colors that are mixed. And I think if the colors just start flowing and mixing too much, um, we will get uh, what we got the last time, which was a predominantly greenish blue uh, warp. We're just going to use one warp today, and it's one warp of 100 ends of 100% wool, three yards long. It's been soaking for a few hours in the acid water. I should mention that this crock pot is for dyeing only. I will not be using it for food again. It's dedicated to dyeing only. In fact, my entire kitchen here is a dye kitchen. I'm fortunate to have been able to purchase a house that has two kitchens. And my studio is a, a separate unit attached to my house with a kitchen, so I use it only uh, for dyes. I'm going to put on my uh, respirator right now and then I will sound muffled, but I'm working with uh, the dry dye powders, so I need a respirator to keep the particles from entering my respiratory system. My voice is muffled for this next bit, so I'm going to do a voiceover instead. I am using a palette knife just like before uh, to sprinkle my dyes on. I'm starting with yellow because yellow tends to be the color that gets lost and overpowered by the others in the mixing process. I'm being careful to wipe the palette knife off between colors. I don't want to introduce any of the colors uh, into the wrong containers. I've speeded up the video slightly here um, as I just keep introducing the three colors in multiple layers. I'm being careful to try not to put the same colors over top of the same colors, I'm hoping that some mixing will come by changing up the, uh, the color order. I have a little sieve and I think I might try that next time so that instead of dropping big blotches on I can sprinkle it and spread it out just a little bit more. But as uh, in the beginning, I end with the yellow, hoping that uh, I'll get some areas that stay a bit yellow. Finally, I add the acid water that I had used for soaking the yarn, and I just cover the yarn so that uh, it can all be submerged. And then I turn the pot on high and put the lid on. And now it's safe to remove my mask. So what I'm hoping for is that we get the primary colors to stay in their primary state 
as well as maybe some secondary and tertiary colors um, as the colors mix in the water. With all the acid on the yarn, I'm hoping that that means the uh, colors are striking right away and uh, that will happen, that we'll get those those colors in their, in their uh, primary states. It looks like we're going to get speckling, which is interesting, because we didn't get speckling the last time because we uh, had no acid in there to start, and so all the dyes dissolved and um, we had a much more overall color. So this one I think is going to look different. What it's going to look like, I'm not sure. Okay, it's been about half an hour, but I think there's been enough of a change that it's worth taking a look. So it looks like we have a purple colored water, which is different from uh, what we had in the first batch. So it looks like the magenta and the blue are mixing. And it looks like we have a little bit of yellow and blue mixing for some green. So maybe we'll have a variety of colors. I don't know. It looks like we will still have a little bit of speckling, which is cool. But uh, I'm not going to push that uh, yellow under the water yet. I think we're, I still see some dry powders, but I want to preserve a bit of yellow. So I'm going to wait until uh, this has gotten hotter and the a lot of the water has cleared, then maybe stir it up a bit and let and let the yellow um, dissolve then. But right now we have some yellow and I kind of want to preserve a bit of that. have no idea what's happening in the lower levels. Again, not going to check it out. So this one so far looks like it's overall going to be purple, hmm, as opposed to the green we had in the last one. So fun, fun, fun. It has been about an hour, 45 minutes. Um, that is almost two hours. So let's take a peek. Ooh. Ooh, I love what I'm seeing here. Oh, I hope we get some of that down underneath. I hope that's not just a sitting on top color scheme. The water is still purple in that spot. I'm not going to uh, stir anything yet because we still have color in the water. Although a lot of it has struck. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. I sure hope there's oranges and greens down below too and that the whole thing isn't just purple. But, ha, huh, okay, we're going to continue and let this keep cooking. It hasn't come to a boil yet. It is a slow cooker, so it's being slow. Once it's starting to to bubble a little bit. I might poke it around and just make sure that all the, the dry powders are, are dissolved. Okay, it's been two and a half hours. Oh, isn't that lovely? Ah, it's gorgeous. At least on the surface here, it's gorgeous. Um, Looks like even the yellow that was sitting on the here is uh, has been dissolved. I'm just going to stir just a bit, lifting. I want to make sure there's no uh, sediment or no particles that are undissolved. Ooh, there's a fair amount of white here. Interesting. It's a complete opposite of the last one. Look at the white there. 
the color struck and did not move around. Unlike the first one, where the colors all moved and everything blended, this one, the color struck right away and didn't move around. Pink, blue. Well, look at the lovely colors. And a little bit of orange. I could have used more yellow in this actually. Lots of white. The water is pretty much clear, so I'm just gonna yeah, stir it a bit to make sure everything has been dissolved. This is definitely more like what I was looking for. I wasn't expecting there to be any white though, so that's interesting. I'm going to put the lid back on. And I think it's safe to turn the heat off altogether and just let it cool down in the pot. I'm going to come back tomorrow morning. This is evening now. So I'm going to come back uh, in the morning and it should be cool by then and we can pull it out and take a look at this yarn. It's the next day, the next morning. Oh, look at the color. Everything is cold, yes. Oh, the color's gorgeous. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. And last night when I looked, I thought there was a lot of white, but there isn't. Even the parts that looked white are looking a little yellowish. There's a, a tint to it. So it's light but not white. Oh look at here's the rain. Yes, this is the rainbow that I was going for in my first experiment. So I think the key is the key is having uh, lots of acid in the uh, yarn before you even start and that uh, causes the colors to strike right away and stay in their state. We have a yellow, we have a little area that is pure yellow, it didn't get touched by the others so we have the pure, uh, it's a raspberry not a not a magenta but and a blue a pure blue a pure yellow and a pure raspberry magenta uh, substitute there oh this is beautiful I think I'll try this again and I'll try it with even different colors um, three primaries but different primaries uh, probably the same yellow because I don't have a big variety of yellow. Anyway, I'm going to keep doing this with uh, many different variations of the three primaries. This is gorgeous. This is what I was looking for. Let's wash it and then take and dry it and then take another look. And here is the dry warp. Isn't this gorgeous? We have all the colors. Actually, what I'm surprised about is that we don't really have much in the way of orange. The yellow and the magenta did not mix a whole lot, but gorgeous nonetheless. So we have the yellow where it was placed. We have blue where it was placed and we have some magenta 
where it was placed, but then the colors also moved around a little bit. Oh, we have a little bit of orange here. Yeah, we do, after all, hiding inside there, just a bit. So the colors did move around and create secondary colors. Um, because there was acid in the yarn, when I dropped the dry powder in, we have um, little sort of blotchy areas. You can see it on the blue here, where it went in heavy. But because, I think, because it went in cold, the water was cold to begin with, it still moved around a little bit. I think if it had been hot and acidic, it wouldn't have moved. There's a little bit of orange. I think hot and acidic, would have, the colors would have stayed right where I dropped them. But because it was cold and acidic, they were allowed to move around a bit and uh, create and mix and create other colors. The color I used for magenta, uh, which was raspberry, is probably not the best primary. Um, I love the effect it gave, but I, it, I don't think it acted quite like a primary. Oh, there's some nice greens in there. So I'm gonna do this again with three more colors to use as primaries. Nobody, uh, there's no rules about having to use uh, pure primaries or or which color scheme uh, I need to use, what kind of a red or what kind of a blue or what kind of a, a yellow. So I get to make my own rules and I'm going to keep trying this with different um, sets of three colors. So I think this is going well, this is a gorgeous warp, and it's going to make a beautiful piece of weaving. Let me just chain it up now. So there we go, all chained up. It is 100 ends, and it was three yards long before it went into the dye pot. So it'll be slightly less than that, two and three quarters in there. This is 100% wool, not super wash. So it's going to make a beautiful, warm, cozy scarf, I would say, with 100 ends at 10 to 15 ends per inch, uh, depending on the weave structure. Yeah, that's scarf width. Or it can be combined with other warp chains and be sort of a highlight in a larger, wider project. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and check out my store and my patreon thank you for watching